Hello everyone and welcome back. I am as always Inquisitor Aura and this is how to roleplay in World of Warcraft and today we are going to be taking a look at the Shaman. Please note that these are just generally accepted guidelines to socially acceptable and lore friendly roleplay in World of Warcraft. There is a niche for every type and style of roleplay out there. What I am telling you here are the generally accepted guidelines that will not get you ridiculed. Farseer, Elder, Earthmender, Mystic, Spirit Caller. Many are the titles associated with the venerable and wise shaman. Gifted warriors granted the power to communicate and cooperate with the ancient elemental spirits Shaman are highly regarded men and women within their societies as charismatic, wise leaders, and guides of clans, tribes, and entire civilizations. But what makes a good shaman? Better yet, what makes good shaman roleplay? One of the first and definitely one of the most important things to remember when playing a shaman is that shaman deal exclusively in the raw power of the elements earth, air, fire, and water, and to be a shaman is to understand that these elements are both benevolent and destructive. You as a shaman embody this innate elemental dichotomy. Earth is both steady and unsteady. It is the mountain that stands against time and the quake that levels villages. Air is the gentle breath of life and the violent gale that can rip forests out of their roots. Fire is illuminating and unpredictable, at once providing safety from the dark and containing an all-consuming hunger. And water is restorative and breath-stealing. It nurtures life and can drown it in its icy depths. To be a shaman is to innately understand this dual nature and to work ceaselessly to maintain its delicate balance. These spirits have more physical forms, and keeping this in mind, for the most part, a shaman chooses to work in concert with the elemental spirits. Most shaman choose to work peacefully with their elemental companions, and many form tight-knit bonds with the elementals that they call upon. This is not always the case, however. Dark shaman have abused this trust, to corrupt and bind elementals to their service as slaves. And some shaman have even fallen sway to the wills of powerful elemental lords and are slaves themselves. This is important to understand because shaman do not cast their spells the same way that other spellcasters. They do through one of two methods. The first method is the totem. The totem is a tool and they act as conduits for elemental power. They serve as something of a contract. They allow the shaman to access one specific spell or ability per totem. The shaman can have as many such contracts, and most do, and how you summon totems is entirely up to you. The second way that shamans cast their spells is by asking the elementals for permission to channel their power for your benefit. Now, how you ask the elementals is entirely up to you. Elementals are fickle and in very, very much intelligent, and sometimes they may need to be bullied. Sometimes they may just need to be spoken politely to. In either case, you are getting the elementals willing assistance with your spells, and that is what counts. Let's get into the most important part about being a shaman. Now, while this may not apply to all shaman, most Azerothian shaman are likely associated with the Earthen Ring. The Earthen Ring is the most influential shamanistic group on Azeroth, and its purpose is to maintain the harmonious balance between elemental forces that make up the world. Members of the Earthen Ring commune with the most powerful spirits and keep them pacified to prevent widespread destruction. 
some believe that the earthen ring's role in the preservation of the world has become essential. Now keep in mind, membership is not mandatory, but the most senior and most powerful shaman almost certainly answer to the earthen ring and are devoted to preserving the balance. It is joked that they have forgotten more about crazy old gods, ancient legends, and lore than most other scholars will ever know. The earthen ring is ancient. It's probably as ancient as the shamanic presence on Azeroth, because shaman have been on Azeroth since the beginning. The Tauren, the Trolls, and the Pandaren have had Shaman for a very long time. That being said, its presence has been publicly known for only about 150 years. The Earthen Ring is the group responsible for preserving the world after Deathwing's disastrous escape from Deep Holm. As a Shaman, you are unique as a spellcaster. You possess and can access basically limitless power, but there is a catch, and it is really important to understand this catch. If you anger a spirit as a shaman, it can and will revoke its blessings, and you will no longer be able to access its power. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you don't want to know Legion spoilers, please skip this next part. I will have it in the description below, the safe time for you to go to. This happens to one of the most well-known and powerful shaman in Warcraft history. We know this being to be Thrall or Goel. When Thrall uses the elements, during his mock Gora with Garrosh Hellscream on Draenor, the spirits abandon him. The Doomhammer, a sacred shaman weapon, becomes little more than a block of iron in his hands. Shaman need to heed this warning. If you ask too much of the elements without the greatest, most dire need, it is entirely possible that whatever spell you are trying to cast will simply fizzle out. Shaman are conduits for the raw elemental powers they command, but the elemental spirits are fickle. You are granted their power because you ask for it, in some way, shape, or form. Elder Shaman earn the trust of powerful elementals over the course of their lives, but even the most powerful and humble of them must remember that the elemental spirits are willing partners, not slaves, and do not share their power without good reason. Now that we've gotten through the background information, let's get into some role-playing tips for Shaman. And the biggest and most important thing in recent shaman history that every shaman needs to consider is the cataclysm. The cataclysm was a major event, more so to shaman than to anyone else. Where were you when it happened? What was your role during it? And were you a member of the earthen ring before or after it happened? Remember, the shaman spent a lot of time after Deathwing's escape from Deep Holm both repairing the world pillar and keeping the elements on the surface in balance so that they did not destroy the world. Where were you during most of this? What work were you doing trying to appease the elements? Were you trying to appease the elements? What was your role as a shaman during this most tumultuous time? And the next most important thing to remember is that your age as a shaman is extremely important. The more time you spend with the elemental spirits, the more trust and faith they have in you that you will do right by them as well as yourself. The older, venerable shaman command considerable power even though they are frailer. And the younger shaman might be more vivacious, but they tend to be flighty and fickle, and the elements do not trust them as much. So consider your age carefully when you're role-playing your shaman. A young shaman has power, but an older shaman 
is better versed in its use. Now that we've gotten through some RP tips, let's take a look at some of the notable shaman on Azeroth and beyond. And of course, we cannot talk shaman without talking Thrall, aka Goel. Thrall, the son of Duratan and Draka, the first Azeroth trained shaman, the former war chief of the Horde, and the world shaman who stood in the Earth Warder's place to destroy Deathwing. We also cannot forget to mention Drek'thar, the Blind Shaman, the Elder Shaman of the Frostwolf Clan, and Thrall's teacher and mentor on Azeroth. Magatha Grintotem, the Elder Crone, counts herself amongst the Shaman population and is the most powerful Shaman of the Grim Totem tribe. There is Ner'zhul, former Elder Shaman and Chieftain of the Shadowmoon Clan. He was once admired, venerated, and respected for his deep connection with the spirits. There is Farseer Nobundo, the former Draenei Vindicator, aka Paladin, who is widely believed to be the first of the Draenei Shaman, seeing shamanism as an alternate path to the light. There is Rhaegar Earthfury, gladiator, shaman, and hero of the storm. Ban Bearheart of the Shadow Pan. Zulu Head the Wacked, former leader of the Dragon Maw Clan, who is one of the few remaining orc shamans within the Old Horde, and whose visions led him to the Demon Soul and the capture of Alexstrasza the Lifebinder. High Shaman Moln Earthfury, leader of the Earthen Ring, and Stormcaller Milra, the Wild Hammer Dwarf Shaman and member of the Earthen Ring. Well, that is going to be it for me for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like what you see and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 500 subscribers and you know what that means. It means another personal, you get to see my face and maybe I'll put on makeup video coming up in which I talk about projects I have in the works coming for you guys and other such fun things. Anyways, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you again in Azeroth. <laughs>